thank you for spending some time with me to talk about the new Denon receivers. So my name is Phil Jones, and I'm, if you have not met me before, I am the director of training for Sound United. We are introducing four new receivers as part of our 2020 X series lineup. We are going to be introducing a, a 2700, a 3700, a 4700, and a 6700. And these are the new 2020 X series receivers to replace the models above $1,600. Now, the 8500 will continue in the lineup. There's all these cool features. If I had told you just this year that we were adding all of these cool new things that were found out of 2019 models under 1600 US, people would have been great. Here's my money. But as every good American salesperson says, wait, there's more. Um, Denon has always been a leader when it comes to introducing the latest surround sound formats. So we're gonna talk about one now um, called DTSX Pro. And Denon is the first AVRs that have DTSX Pro built in. When you go from the 2700 to the 3700, you get IMAX enhanced. When you go from the 3700 to the 4700, we add Oro 3D. And finally, when you step up to the 6700, it will now it will utilize the newly announced um, DTSX Pro. Denon is the first AVRs that will support um, DTSX Pro. DTSX Pro will not only be in, on the 6700, but the 8500 will be upgraded to that technology via a firmware update later in the year. Denon is the first AVRs that have DTSX Pro built in. Now, there are a couple of really, 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 really high-end um, uh, surround sound processors that cost about the same as a, as a small BMW, but that have it. But we are the first receivers to actually have DTSX Pro. So let's talk about what that is. DTSX Pro is going to be introduced on our 6700, and, um, and it will be available via an upgrade on our X8500. And on the 6700, it will support up to 13.2 channels of surround sound with a, with, while if you utilize an external amplifier. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. Um, what makes DTSX Pro cool is now DTSX can support up to 30 point two channels or 30.2 speakers in a room. Uh, originally DTS for consumers was limited to 11.1. And this had nothing to do with the content. It had to do with licensing and the processing power that was built into a, cons a consumer receiver or surround sound processor. So the good thing is all of the content you already have in DTSX is now can be played up in DTSX Pro through up to 30 speakers. So you don't have to go out and buy new content. Because the first thing that I, when I first heard it, I was like, oh great, how many, how many copies of Star Wars do I have to buy? Do I gotta go out and buy another piece of content? And the answer is no. Basically all those DVDs, all those 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays are going to get better be, um, if they're DTSX encoded, because they can be played back in DTSX Pro. And, and that has to do with the fact that DTSX slash DTSX Pro, along with Dolby Atmos, are object-based surround sound formats. And some of the older formats you're familiar with are channel-based. So let's talk about the differences real quick. Now, a channel-based surround sound, the way that they do it is they record a whole bunch of different um, instruments for a song or a whole bunch of different sounds for a movie. Then they assign those sounds to, um, say it's a movie, up to nine channels. And then the engineer has to manually pan that sound around the room. So if I want a helicopter to go from the left front speaker to the left rear speaker, I start off with the helicopter with the volume more volume in the left front speaker, and gradually I add more volume. I change the level of volume 
to the left rear speaker has the most more volume than the left front, and that object will appear to pan across the room. So if I wanted to add more um, surround sound channels, I had to start a by do another format. That's why we had um, before back in the days if we do Dolby, Dolby Pro Logic, um, Dolby Digital, and Dolby all these other ones, 7.1, 9.1. There was all these different formats because each time I wanted to add um, more speaker channels, I had to add a new format. Now DTSX and Dolby Atmos are object based, which means there are no real traditional speaker channels. We use speaker channels to play back the objects, but the recording is not based on speaker channels. The way to think of it is the sound engineer has, they have a hundred and something plus objects. And what they do is to make it backwards compatible. They take like the first nine objects and they put them in stationary positions. And they call that the bed layer. And that becomes the layer that would that makes uh, this content backwards compatible because that because your your regular Dolby uh, your regular Dolby system or um, and your regular DTS DTS system would just play back the bed layer of those nine objects. The when you have a Dolby Atmos DTS X, you also have over a hundred additional objects, and those objects those sounds are assigned a m metadata information, and that information is the location. It is where it's located. It's located right here. How big is it? Is it this big or is it like this tiny little bell or is it a huge crowd? And also how diffuse is it? Once that information is provided for the hundred objects that they can mix for, your renderer in your receiver will look at how many channels it has available to render those objects in that location. So if there's a speaker there, great. If not, I will use, the receiver will use, um, will mix it equally between the two speakers to make it appear like it is floating in the location that the, um, the mixing engineer intended. Because there are no channels, it's just, there's objects and those objects, that object's supposed to be right here. If I have, five speakers, I can make it sound there, but it's not gonna be as good as if I have 30 speakers. If I have 30 speakers, I'm more likely to get that object to appear exactly the way where the mixing engineer intended. So for you, the benefit is your content will continue to get better. Oh, speaking of object-based audio, I get asked a lot about, well, what about music? Music um, is, uh, I, is normally mixed in channels, right? Well, sometimes it is. If I go to a jazz club and I put two microphones in to record a live recording and it captures all the ambiance, yeah, that's recorded in, in uh, two channels. Sometimes they'll take um, an opera and they'll put you know, two uh, microphones in the front and the back and up on the ceiling to capture all of the ambient effect in the room. And then that is actually recorded in channels. But most recordings you listen to are mixed in a studio or are captured in a studio where they mic the lead singer. The next day they mic they mic the, the background singer comes in and sings his channel. Then the next time or his his um his uh part. Then they mic the drums. They mic the guitar. They mic the electric guitar. They mic the trumpet. They mic the the tuba. They mic the keyboard. Now all of those things are basically just um uh. Uh, lanes on a um, or objects on a mixing board. So before I if I did a stereo recording, I would take some of these objects and put it to the left, some of these objects and put it to the to the right. Some objects I would play through both speakers, so it sounds like it was coming from directly in front of you. Well, now with Dolby Atmos, I actually can go in and I can take those objects and put those objects anywhere I want, and it is really a cool effect for music. So. One thing I want to bring up in, in the U.S. and I'm sure in select regions that I'm talking to today, um, Tidal um, has just announced um, a large collection of Dolby Atmos encoded music. So if you have if you have Tidal in your region and you have the top um, uh, subscription for Tidal, if I take a Apple TV, a, a brand new Nvidia Shield from 2019. 
a Fire TV, Fire Cube, or if I have a Sony television set, Android TV, they all have a title app in it. And if I turn on that title app, I can, um, on my Apple TV, I can, uh, and that Apple TV is plugged into my receiver via HDMI, my receiver will light up um, when I select one of those Atmos music tracks in Atmos and play it back. And there's thousands of songs, classic rock, um, pop, hip hop um, in there that's available. I was playing it last night. It is absolutely amazing. So not only are, are you going to start, do you see object-based content available in um, for movies, you're also starting to see this available when it comes to music as well. Somebody commented that most customers only care about Atmos, but do you want to explain why it's important for us to be able to do Oro 3D and Atmos and DTSX and IMAX Enhanced? Okay, so the, so, the, so the first thing is, as Jim says, it's important because we want to give your clients options. It's not for us to determine what surround sound format is the best surround sound format. It, we want to make sure if a customer buys a disc and we can give them the best performance off of that disc. There's lots of Atmos discs, but there's also as many, if not more, DTSX discs. And those DTSX discs just got better. So you liked Atmos, you don't, you, but you haven't heard DTSX Pro, you may like that more. You don't know. Our goal is to give you Atmos, to give you DTSX, to give you RO3D, to give you IMAX Enhanced, and the, and the client or you can choose the one that you like best. DTSX Pro is going to be introduced on our 6700, um, and it will be available via an upgrade on our X8500. So the way this works is there's a new DTSX decoder in the receiver and, that, and, and, and a new renderer. So what happens is if I feed it DTSX content, um, the, the decoder will decode the objects, like we talked about, those 100 plus objects, the channels, that nine cha layer, that not, those nine bed layers, which will act like your regular surround sound, your regular uh, DTS surround sound, and then they will feed that to the renderer. And the renderer will look at how many speakers I have available, up to 30, to determine how I make those objects and those channels appear in your room. If I have older content, DTS content or DTS HD content, the decoder will decode it and send those channels to a new NeuroX upmixer, which can upmix those, um, those uh, channels into up to 30.2 speakers. And then finally, if I have content that's not DTS, like PCM that's available a lot of times on an Apple 4K Apple TV, it will also go through the Neural X up mixer and it can also be up mixed to up to 30.2 channels. There are no receivers and we're, and, and we're not launching a receiver with 30.2 channels. But the nice thing about it is we are launching, we do have receivers that have 13 channels and now just like Atmos, you can utilize all 13 channels found in a 8500 as well as a 6700 with additional amplification. IMAX enhanced. If you go to an IMAX theater, an IMAX sound system in the big mega theaters is actually a 12.0. Zero means it does, they do not have LFE channels. Every single channel is full range. And when I mean full range, I mean full range. Those speakers are like nine, 10 feet tall with their own subwoofers and they play down to 23 in order to even be part of the, be, be considered um, used in these particular theaters. My speakers are very nice floor standards and I guarantee you they cannot play down to 23. On top of that, you notice it's a 12.0. There are, there are seven speakers around the horizon, you're seven, like a seven, so think of it as a 7.0. Then there are five height speakers, um, two in the front, two in the back, and a center front height. So think of IMAX, um, in the IMAX theater, it, uh, um, this 12.0 as a 7.0.5 is what you would get um, in an IMAX theater. Now, most of us do not have a 7.0.5. So the system, the content is adapted 
but using um, DTS X Pro to give you the, um, an experience utilizing the speakers um, configurations we have in homes. The base of IMAX Enhanced is DTS X Pro. So because DTS X Pro has been announced, IMAX Enhanced will be getting better. And I know some of you guys say, who cares? There's no content. But Sony has announced that they're going to be um, introducing over 100 movies in IMAX Enhanced um, in, the, in the upcoming year. Now, if I look um, at IMAX Enhanced um, and I apply it to DTS X Pro, the speaker layout is very close to what you see for Oral 3D. So, for example, um, we mentioned that, so say this is a seven, um, I have seven surround sound speakers in this room. If I have the Neuro X off, I have um, front heights, rear heights, and a center height. So if you look there, it's a 7.1.5 because I have a center height. If I turn on the DTSX Neuro X, I will get not only a center height, but a top surround, which oral three, they call it top surround, oral 3D calls it the voice of God. But basically, um, I get two speakers, the, the center height and the top surround if the Neural X encoder is engaged. So let's look at a 6700. A 6700 has 11 channels of amplification and 13 channels of processing. Let me say that again. A 6700 has 11 channels of amplification and 13 channels of processing. If you want to run 13 speakers, you will need an external amplifier to drive two of the channels, all right? So say so, so I go out and I buy that external amplifier and I want to put 13 speakers or 13 channels in my room. I have the ability to either set up a more traditional Dolby Atmos 7.2.6 configuration with uh, top middles or maybe uh, or middle heights, or I could set up an Oral 3D slash DTSX Pro slash IMAX enhanced system, which has front heights, rear heights, a center height, and a top surround, or as Oral 3D calls it, the voice of God. So I have two different options for 7.2.6. In addition, for the Adobe Atmos, I could actually do a 7. Point, um, I can um, I can also do a 7.2.4 if I want to utilize that as well. So that is also still available. But I have to pick between the Adobe Atmos configuration and the Oral 3D slash DTSX Pro slash IMAX configuration. So the next question people say was, well, what if I want that, I want to be able to have that IMAX configuration, IMAX DTSX Pro configuration, and I want the to be able to utilize the Adobe Atmos configuration. Well, that's where the 8500 comes in because it has 13 channels of amplification, 13 channels of processing, and 15 speaker terminals. So when I can go into the menu and I can switch in the menu using the um, the uh, amp assign from the Adobe Atmos configuration to the Oral 3D slash DTSX Pro slash IMAX configuration in the menu. And I will show you how that is done um, utilizing the 6700 when we start messing around with the menu system. Actually, um, let's after let's talk a couple more slides and then I will show you that. Now the next question is, well, what if I just choose the Adobe Atmos? Is that going to mean that the DTSX is not going to sound good? Or what if I choose the DTSX Pro config? One of these DTSX Pro configurations. Um, what about my Adobe Atmos? If I look at these layouts, if you look at it, like I said, DTSX can support up to 30.2 speakers, or think of it as 30 speaker positions and two LFEs. Adobe Atmos can support up to 35 speaker locations and one LFE channel. And if you look at those speaker config, those speaker locations, they are pretty similar between the two technologies. The only difference, the main difference is DTSX Pro supports a center height 
and a top surround, which is not supported by the Adobe Atmos configuration. And if I, and a lot of times people think this, the layouts are different, but they really, when you look at something like a 7.4 layout, they really are not. Um, basically, DTSX and IMAX Enhanced always shows the drawing with the couch in the middle. And if you look at Adobe Atmos, they always show the couch kind of pulled back towards the rear surrounds. If I push that couch towards the middle of the room, if you look at the measurements on the Adobe Atmos measurements, they could be those degree, those uh, uh, angles change. And the closer I push the, the couch to the to the center of the room, the closer it comes to being the same locations as they are in um, in DTS X. So it basically what I'm telling you is if you set it up for Adobe Atmos, those same channels will be utilized in DTSX Pro and it will sound just fine. It'll sound amazing. All right. So any questions about that stuff so far, Jim? No, but we have a new another new request mm -hmm. that I haven't heard before. <laughs> I'm having a blast, by the way, because it's really late. <laughs> Well, Jim, um, what time is it there for you, Jim? 11 at night? Uh, almost midnight. Wow. Um, You're a soldier. Frederick does this all the time, but not me. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are a couple of requests mm -hmm. that after you are all done with the actual presentation, that mm -hmm. you get one of your cameras going a little mobile. And show the and system? Show the rig, <laughs> both rigs. They want to see your AV rig <laughs> and... They want to see your video <laughs> rig, and they also want you to post model numbers and links for all your video good doodads and goo okay. guys and okay. stuff like I that. Think I may yeah. have to do a webinar, a YouTube video on multi-camera webinars, which is pretty I funny. suggested that you should do a quick tour of the, the setup. We could do a minute and post it to the YouTube channel. Everyone subscribe, the link's in the chat. Yeah, I, I could definitely do that. I will do a, um, we could definitely, definitely do that. Um, I could also do it with my phone at the end. Oh, they, at the Q &A, do I could do it with my phone. Hmm? You can do it at the end here, but yes, they would I'll also like, the model numbers and stuff, not, you know, for the cameras yes. and all of that good stuff. By the way, uh, for everyone out there, you know that we're just having fun amongst ourselves. Uh, in the uh, handouts tab, which is over on the uh, control panel screen where the questions tab is, there is a handout of this presentation. Please do download that. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Like I said, this would not work, work this smooth without um, the help of Frederick and Jen and Jim. So I definitely appreciate it. I have all the cameras and stuff here, but they make sure that everything else works so I can just focus on talking to you and they take care of all of that admin stuff, which makes my life a lot easier. So actually, um, let's talk about one other feature and then I want to dive into the menus so I can show you how that next, how this other feature works. And this new feature that I really want to talk about, it's called dual speaker preset. And the premise of this is you can save two different Odyssey or calibrations into your receiver. So um, use case number one, in, in, in my room, I have a, a large 75 inch TV that we use during the day. And on the left side of the room is a big, like 12 foot, you know, four meter sliding door. And, and what happens when the curtains are open um, to look out the, out the sliding door and, the sc and that screen is on, um, that has an effect on my acoustics in my room. At night, I have a projector. So when I lower my projection screen and I close the blackout curtains, that changes the characteristics of my room, the acoustics of my room. So what I did, is I have the Odyssey Multi-Q app. And what I did was I did a full Odyssey calibration with the curtains open and the TV and the, and the flat panel on. The eight positions, I went in and I did, you know, I played with my, I like to adjust my levels, a little bit more bass here, a little bit more surround sound there, made some adjustments to the crossovers, and I got it to sound exactly the way I wanted it to sound for when I was watching TV with my curtains open. Then I went in and I did another Odyssey multi um, Odyssey calibration using the multi-Q app, multi-Q editor app for with the curtains closed 
and the screen down. Now to switch between those two on my AV8805, I have to physically um, open the multi-Q app and reload the Odyssey, the one configuration. And then when I get done, reload back. I have to constantly go in and load and reload um, the configurations, or I, I would have to load it off of a USB. Now I can I can save both of those calibrations inside of the receiver and make that adjustment with the with the push of a button. So it's way faster and way more useful. So I can have um, the TV show watching mode um, calibration and movie watching calibration in the receiver and switch quickly and easily between the two. Another scenario, say I sit on the couch and I just want, I wanted to make a, um, a calibration for the ultimate one person dad sweet spot. So on my couch, I just want it to be me. Then at the same time, um, the I have a 12 foot couch and I may wanna do a wide calibration for the entire family. So I can have a dad calibration and a family calibration. The last one is um, we, we're hearing a lot that, oh my God, you guys took off Dolby Center Spread uh, off of your receivers. That is because to add Dolby um, Speaker Virtualizer, um, Dolby said we had to take Center Spread off. So you could have Dolby Speaker Virtualizer or Center Spread for, for when you play when you play music. And we chose Virtualizer because we believe that people would really like to have that Atmos experience. But what you can do is if you do not like the surround, the, the stereo to surround sound music up mixer, um, the way that they are in the receiver, as I can go in, I can pick one of my, my favorite up mixer, Oral 3D, DT, the DTS um, Neural X, whichever one I want to use, the Dolby one, and then I can go in and I can customize it. Turn the center down, switch the center off, uh, and under the amp, under the amp assign, do whatever I want, um, crossovers, levels, everything to get exactly the way I want it and make myself the perfect um, two-channel to surround sound music mode. And I can also have the perfect um, surround sound uh, um, version. So I can do that as well in these receivers. It's a really, really, really cool thing. And it is called um, dual speaker preset. So let's actually go in and look at the menu system of the receiver. So this is the menu system of the um, AV6700 that I have sitting next to me. And by the way, this is serial number number one in the US. It's the first one I stole it from the office because I wanted to show it to you guys. So let's go down here to where it says speakers. When I click on speakers, um, you'll notice at the top next to Denon, you will see this thing called um, preset number two. I'm sure you guys actually see that. Now, that is an indication that I am using the second speaker preset. If I go in here to manual, um, um, the manual setup, you'll see you have all your adjustments. Amplifier, amplifier sign, configuration, how big they are, distances, levels, crossovers, bass, um, all that stuff. And you'll see at the bottom, this thing called speaker preset. Right now, I am set to preset number two. So if I go into amp sign right now, you'll see that in amp sign right now, I have it running in preamplifier mode, which is another new thing that we have available. So I can go in and say I set this one to preamplifier mode, or I turn my, I have the amplifiers on, but I turn the center channel off, or, or whatever I want to do, I can save it that way. Then I can, if I go down to speaker preset here, you'll see that there is a one and a two. So I go to speaker uh, preset number one. Now, when I come out of here, you'll notice the little icon next to the Denon now says preset number one. And now I can go up here. And if I go into amp assign, this one is set to 13.1. So one, I have the amplifier off. I have all the amplifiers switched off. And the other one, I am using the amplifier in the receivers to drive all of the uh, 11 of the speakers. And then the pre-out is being, for the external amplifier, is used to power the, uh, the mains. Oh, by the way, 
This is actually pretty cool. If you look here, you see it says pre-outs. Now, I said the 6700 has 11 channels of amplification and 13 channels of processing, which means you're going to have to use an amp to drive something. Now, I could use that amp to drive um, a pair of surround heights, but come on, you really want to use it to drive your fronts. Go out and get a good amplifier to drive your fronts. The benefit of this, too, is your, the preamp circuits of your front channels are physically disconnected from the amplifiers that are in the receiver, which helps reduce any um, excessive or any, un, um, any clipping, helps reduce the amount of clipping and also improves the sonics. So I can start off with an amplifier running my, um, my mains. Now I mentioned that another feature we have this year is called, that's introduced, it's called preamp mode. And what preamp mode does, it's available in the 37, 47, and 67. Preamplifier mode is if I switch to preamplifier mode, all of the amplifiers, the internal amplifiers on the receiver are disconnected. And ta-da, you have a Denon preamp. So this really helps improve the sound quality and allows your system to grow. So I can start off with just an amplifier on, in a 13-channel system running and I use it to run my mains because the main speakers are the ones that require the most power. Later, I go out and I buy a bunch of amplifiers because we believe you should buy the amplifier, you buy the amplifiers. Then I could take the receiver and switch it to pre-amplifier mode. This is an all or nothing proposition. If I switch to pre-amplifier mode, I gotta have amplifiers for all of the speakers. But now my receiver is just a preamp. This is the best way to grow into something like these big racks that I have here. I start off with the receiver, then I bought an amplifier to drive my mains. Then I bought more amplifiers to drive all the rest of the speakers in my room, and I use my receiver as a preamp. And then finally, um, I replaced my receiver with an actual preamp. So it allows you to grow your system. The benefit of amplifiers is to buy once, cry once proposition. Amplifiers last for a long, 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 long time if they're high quality. Normally the reason why you have to replace a receiver is because of new video technologies and new surround sound technologies. The amplifiers in that receiver is perfectly fine. So this allows you to go from a receiver to a, to a receiver driving amplifiers to a full separate system and I can get great performance. And this is a really cool thing that I am jazzed about. Any questions about um, pre-amplifier mode or um, dual speaker preset, Jim? Um, <clears throat> I think Sandeep wants to know, can you switch between the presets with a touch? Did you touch on the fact that you can do it with control systems? Yeah. Um, so thanks, Jim. I forgot to mention that. The, the so, three different ways you can do it, plus the control system. Yeah. Yeah. And then so the, the other one was Aaron, I hope I'm getting that one right, mm -hmm. uh, was asking about uh, an old Denon 4311. Apparently that had a preamp only mode where it mm -hmm. totally shut down the power amp. So just make sure that they understand that it's either you could do the mains with an external power amp, or you can do everything. Oh, oh you can Thanks. do everything. There's no in between. So, so the way you can do it, I can go into the menu like I just did and switch it. There's a discrete code that can go in the control system, RS-232, IP, all that stuff. Or these little, remember the little buttons we put on the front of every dinner receiver? The one, two, three, fours right here. What you would do is you would program the, uh, the, um, the uh, speak, you would take the quick select button. You would go in, you would make all of your adjustments. What I like about quick select, if you're not using them, um, especially if you have a control system, you're making your job hard. Quick select buttons will turn the receiver on, switch to the proper input, switch it to the proper surround sound mode, turn on the proper speaker preset, and, um, and, uh, and a variety of other things. So instead of you going in and doing a macro, receiver on, input, DVD, surround sound mode, Dolby Atmos, speaker preset, this, I can make, I can do all of that 
and save it as a quick select discrete IR code. And when I hit that, put that one code in, there's seven steps out of my macro when I do a program that I don't have to do. So I can do either the go into the deep menu, I can go into the options menu, I can use, I can program it into a quick select button, or I can get a discrete IR code to add to a control system, regardless of what type of control system it is. So it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. Now, I'm sorry, we haven't even talked about video yet, and that should be enough for you to want one of these receivers. I'm sure that many of you are saying, wow, that's pretty cool. I really want that 6700 um, be just because of, wow, the Bluetooth headphones and the simulcasting and the dual speaker presets and the DTSX Pro, all this stuff, it's amazing. And guess what? We haven't even talked about this 8K stuff yet. So um, it's, a, it's a really, really cool piece. So before we talk about video, do we have any other audio-based questions? Um, I, I want to tell you that we have 22 minutes officially left. Okay. And they wanted to, uh, Sandeep wants to tell you that that upgrading from amp to preamp, he really liked the way you explained that and that, mm -hmm. that feature itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I, uh, Balaji, I'm mm -hmm. butchering names everywhere. My <laughs> apologies, everyone. Um, he wanted to just make sure that you can use the preamp option just for the front left and right main speakers. Yes, on the 6700, because remember it says you have to have an external amplifier to run 13 channels. Oh, by the way, in order for that preamp mode to come on, you do have to have it set to 13 channel mode. So if I go here back to amp assign here, and um, oop, uh, right now, and, and I go to 11 channels, there is no preamp set there. If I go to 13 channels, the preamp shows up. Everybody see that? So it is a, um, it is, that is the one limitation to it is if I'm doing 7.1.4 configuration is enough amplifiers in the receiver, it, it, you only get the preamp option. But if I do, um, if I do 13 channels, then I get that preamp that I can assign. So that is a limitation that I must actually talk about. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and hopefully you will find more interesting information there. I did a 15 minute segment or video solely on DTSX Pro. I'm committed to doing shorter things. There'll be a lot more um, five, 10 minute things on there. Tons of cool features. So better audio experience, better movie experience, gaming experience, better user experience, IMAX enhanced, DTSX Pro, dual speaker preset, preamp mode, Ruin capabilities. Oh, and by the way, we're the we are also the world's first receivers that can support HDMI 2.1 and 8K. So there's plenty of reasons to buy a Denon X series receiver, even if you do not care about 8K.